Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and welcome to another video in our Introduction to Azure Synapse Analytics series. In this video, we're going to take a look at data flows, so stay tuned. No series on Azure Synapse Analytics can be complete without a conversation on data flows. Now, data flows is a term that kind of floats around that is in a lot of other technologies, right? You have Power BI data flows. You have data flows in Dataverse. We have data flows all the way back in introduction to SSIS. And in a lot of ways, it really means the same thing. We use these data flows to extract data, transform it, and then clean it. But this is really where a lot of your transformational logic comes in. A couple of key points about data flows within Synapse Analytics. One, it leverages a multi or what is it a massive parallel processing that's the word technology that is apache spark apache spark is designed for big data solutions and solving big data problems and so when we work through this graphical user interface in the background everything that we do is converted to scala and run against an apache spark cluster and you don't really have to do anything with that it does it for you it spins it up and then it shuts it down when it's done so that part is great. Now I've already started a data flow over here and I turned on data flow debug. What data flow debug allows you to do is data flow debug allows you to preview the data as you're developing and as you're testing and as you're validating by having a, an Apache Spark cluster ready to go. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about Apache Spark, I actually did talk about it earlier in this series. So make sure to go back and check out those videos. All right, so here we go. Let's dive right in. The first thing I want to do is I have a data flow. Now you find data flows in the develop hub. You come up to the top right here and then you can simply choose that you want to create a data flow, right? And once you create a data flow, I want to turn on data flow debug. Now this generally takes probably about three or four minutes to provision a lot faster than it used to be. I think it's even faster if you're in just data factory. Um, and so I have that. I also want to give it a name, right? So I'll call this something like intro to data flows, something very simple like that. All right, now what I wanna do is add a source and the way you do it is you just click right here. So you'll notice that not the same as a pipeline, we don't actually have a list of all the transformations and sources and syncs and things that we can do here. So I'll show you how we get to that in just a moment. But the first thing I'm gonna do is create a source. So I create my source, you give your source a name so I'll come in here and call this one just internet cells. We're going to connect to some internet cells data. And then I have to choose my data set. Oh, can't have a space. So if we can get away with an underscore. Nope. I always forget naming conventions here, there, a little bit different. I'm going to click the drop down and then choose my Azure storage internet cells file. All right. So, so far, pretty straightforward, right? We have data sets. We've been using data sets. We're just using a data set as a source inside of our data flow. Now data flows are a little bit limited as far as the data stores you can connect to. You can't connect to everything that you can connect to within a pipeline because again, everything we do here is converted to Scala and run against the Databricks or essentially an Apache Spark cluster. It, Databricks is what it was originally, not quite sure in Synapse Analytics 100% if it's still Databricks or just Apache Spark. So let's just stick with Apache Spark here. Even if it is, it's probably going to change at some time in the future. So Apache Spark cluster is what we're going to stick with. Now I have the data. Why did you turn on a data, you know, data flow debug? Well, if I want to preview the data as I'm going through various transformations and I want to see if I've replaced those null values, if I split those columns out, if I unpivoted the data, if I did my aggregations, then what I can do is I can hit refresh and I can actually see the data. I can see the data. I can see the data types of the data. I can see the, the schema, right? All of the different column names. So lots of great information that shows up here. Now to complete a data flow, all you really need is a sync, right? A source and a sync and that's it. But from a practical sense, if you're gonna build a data flow, we need to clean some data. We need to transform some data. I like to call data flows um, code free Apache Spark, code free notebooks, right? Because notebooks, you're using an Apache Spark cluster, but you got to go provision and create it. And then you got to write a bunch of code in your notebooks. You got to write PySpark or Scala or .NET, whatever it is that you use. But here, I'm able to just use a UI with a data set and it writes all the code for me. 
and it still gives me the benefit of that massive parallel processing architecture that is Apache Spark. That's pretty cool. Now, if you like this video, I want to point out that we have a series that Austin did on data flows. So I'm not going to go deep into data flows because he's already done a series on that. And over time, we'll definitely be releasing more videos on data flows. No question about it. But this is going to be a pretty straightforward video where I show you a couple of, you know, little tips and tricks. Now, if I want to clean the data up, if you want to say, Mitchell, where are the transformations at? How do we find those? This is it. I'm going to click on that little square box right there, right? The little, not, not even square, just the little plus sign, the addition symbol. And then I'm going to see all the things I can do. So if I had multiple sources, I could join them together, or I could take this source and I can conditionally split it out based on some kind of condition. I can check to see if records exist. I can do a union. All of these things, if you've worked with any form of ETL, are going to make sense to you and they're going to sound familiar. I can do a derived column. That is an SSIS favorite, right? If you know SSIS, you know what I'm talking about. You can aggregate data, create an identifier key, a unique key, pivot and unpivot window functions. Those are super awesome. Um, you can rank your data, right? So just really a lot of good stuff you can do here. A lot of really cool things you can do. If I pull in the derived column transform, you'll see that it kind of creates this pipeline. Uh, pipeline is probably a bad term here since we have pipelines separately. It creates this natural flow of the data and the way that the data is going to be moving here, right? So we have our source and then we have a derived column transform. Now derived column transforms are so popular and so common because we use them to clean up and to transform our data. So if I come over here and I come down to the bottom right here, you'll see we have derived column settings. And then I can come down and say, you know what? I want to replace the values that are in a column. So let's go back over here and see what we can maybe do. We have right here, null values and carrier tracking number. And we don't want to load null values in our database. So lo and behold, we're going to replace those nulls. Lots of stuff we can do here. Check out our data flow series to see that. But let's do just a very simple and quick example. So I'm going to look at my carrier tracking number. And instead of creating a new column, I'm actually going to select the existing column and say, look, replace the values that are in that existing column, right? That's the first thing. Then I'm going to click right here and I'm going to open up what is called the expression builder. The expression builder gives us a just a crazy amount of things that we can do within our data flows. And if you come down here to the bottom and you look at your functions and you just go through the list, it is crazy the number of functions that are available. Now, obviously, some functions are going to be available for certain things and certain ones for other things, like if you're working with an array, if you're working with a string versus a date, a numerical value. But there's a lot of things that you can do inside of these functions. Now, what I'm looking for is just something that works with a null function. Right? We want to replace nulls. So if I search for null, I'll see there's if. So you can check to see if something's null. If it is, do this. If not, do that. You can use an if null function. There's is null, which returns true or false. What I'm actually looking for is a function called coalesce. Um, coalesce, there it is right there. Coalesce is a function that I've always used that is very common. So I'll click on coalesce. Also, if I kind of move over this way, there's a little tooltip that appears that says it returns the first non-null value from a set of inputs. So you can provide a set of inputs and it, replace, it returns the first one that's not null, right? So here's what we do. I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna click on coalesce. Did I already do that? Yes, I did. The first input that I wanna pass in is the column name, right? Check to see if the column name's not null. If it's not null, replace, you know, return the value of that column. So re return that first. So we come down to our input schema. I'm gonna, get rid of my filter here, and then I'm going to grab carrier tracking number. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a comma and I'm gonna provide my list, right? So if that's null, then go to the next thing in the list and return it if it's not null. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm just gonna put in here something like not applicable, and that's what I'm going to return. Now, this is a small subset of data for training and practical purposes here, but if you had a lot of data, you'd be able to go through and say, hey, I see that in this situation, it's actually returning the tracking number. In these situations, it's returning in A. So I'm going to zoom out, click Save and Finish. And then right here under Data Preview, we can now go ahead and refresh our data. If you like this video, make sure to take a moment to hit like and subscribe and make sure that you see all of our future videos 
that we're posting on our channel. All right, so let's take a look and see if it replaced the null values. And yes, it did. It replaced it with an NA. Perfect, flawless, that worked great. Now from this point, we're going to load it to a destination. And the destination that you load it to when you choose your sync, you have a couple of options here, but you can choose blob storage. It'll kind of show you if you look which, which ones are available. And you'll notice that a lot of them are grayed out. So again, we're a little bit limited with data flows as far as your data stores you can connect to. So a common design pattern here, when you get a little bit further down, they get grayed out. A common design pattern, say, Mitchell, I need to connect to data that's in this place over here this third party vendor, this software as a service provider, but I can't pull it into a data flow, but I need to clean it with a data flow. What do I do? Well, you create a pipeline that copies the data and dumps it into the data lake, and then you pick it up with your data flow from the data lake, and then you transform it, clean it, manipulate it, and you load it into your destination. That's it, that's all you do. So this is a very simple workaround, very common to use that design pattern. Now, I'm not actually going to choose any of these. I'm not going to create a new one, but I wanted to show you what was available. For the purpose of just completing this demo, I'm going to choose one of my existing data sets. I'm going to say, look, I want to load that data. Um, I'm going to load it over to this location right here. All right, I'm just going to say I'm going to load it to this data set, which is an Azure Data Lake data set. Now, you'll notice that I can't really run it here. I can't just say run. I can't say debug. It doesn't run from here. If you want to run a data flow, this is the last key element that I want to highlight. If you want to run a data flow, what you need to do is run it from a pipeline, which means that the data flow is effectively disconnected from the pipeline. It is its own, it is its own kind of independent object, if you will, within Azure Synapse Analytics, meaning it can be reused across multiple pipelines. It can be reused across multiple different situations and scenarios, right? So that's pretty cool. So if I want to run this, you go back over to the integrate hub. And then from the integrate hub, I would create a pipeline, give the pipeline a name. And then you might remember right here under move and transform, you have data flows. And if I drag that data flow in, right, I go into the data flow, go under settings. I can then choose the data flow that I want to run right here. Let me zoom in like this, go into advanced. That looks good. Sync properties looks good. If you were going to stage the data, you can specify where you're going to stage it. This has more to do with if you're loading the data to a dedicated pool to get the best and most effective way of loading the data, you would want to stage it first so that it can use polybase here. So that is what this is effectively referencing. Um, hopefully some of our other videos dive into that, but this is it. The parameters here is a little bug. Hopefully they'll fix that eventually. There's not a required element there. You run this pipeline and it loads wherever you wanted the data to go. It runs the data flow, which connects to your data, pulls it in, transforms it, loads it. And when it's done, it closes out that Apache Spark cluster. And that's it. Very quick video and an introduction in data flows and what they do. Why would I use a data flow versus a pipeline? Because I need to clean my data. I want to transform it. I want to do things with data flows that I can't do with pipelines. That's why right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, we will see you in the next one.